The Tesla Model 3 is out and about in Australia. The world's largest solar farm and battery announced for Australia. And well, that and a lot more after this. G'day and welcome, my name's Chris and this is your place for news and reviews about everything in Australia and well, sometimes around the world, in the space of technology, renewables, EVs and more. If you're new to the channel, welcome. For my returning subscribers, thanks for your ongoing support and especially to my patrons who, for like as little as a coffee per month, get early access content, polls, behind the scenes, insights into this channel and more. And well, today I've got a special shout out to do to Angelo, who has joined at producer level. All right, so not only does he get a big thanks from me, but in supporting the channel, he also gets like all that stuff mentioned before, but also direct access to me, weekly shout outs on air, and well, his name and or business, whatever you want to do, will appear in big writing down here or somewhere, or I'll, I'll find a place for it. So again, really big thanks to you, Angelo, and well, let's get into the first bit of news, and that is, Tesla Model 3s are finally hitting the roads in Australia big time. Now, this last Friday, I was very fortunate enough to get a ride from uh, one of my patrons, Ashley. Hi, Ash. And um, I'll do an impressions video on that very, very soon. And it seems that, well, I've called it before and it's no surprise, Tesla once again has <laughs> kind of saved the best to the very last moment of quarter, uh, what would this be for the Americans? Quarter three for Americans. And um, yeah, deliveries have been scheduled uh, like up to the 30th of September, and a lot of people are getting a phone call saying, hey, can you come in today? Come by at four o'clock and pick us up today. And well, that's great. And really seriously, congrats. I'm very jealous, and I, I'm so envious that you guys are out there scooting around in some really awesome tech, renewable transport, sustainable transport. It's, it's just, it's a win-win for everyone. And well done to Tesla for getting out here. Here's something new. Did you know that in Australia, solar farms need to provide the Australian energy market operator with guidance on how much energy they'll input to the grid? And well, if, if they get it wrong, and if they provide like too much or too little, they have to pay penalty fines. Who knew? Well, enter stage left, Solcast. They're like a tech weather forecasting company which allows solar farms to accurately forecast the power that they'll generate for the Australian energy market. Now, Solgas combines information from multiple sources like uh, cloud satellite images, weather patterns, and turns it into a predictive uh, power tool that they can generate um, and understand what the potential energy is going to be five to ten minutes ahead of time. The more accurate predictions, the less likely they are at having to pay penalties. Currently, like eight solar farms have adopted the technology, which include the Park Solar Farm. So if you want to read more about it, please do follow the link down below and well, enjoy the reading. The Yarra City Council, they're, they're like in Melbourne, they've purchased a sea electrical tipper truck to help with garbage collection. Yeah, garbage collection. No more early morning The truck is built on the Izu body and it features a 100 kilowatt hour battery coupled to a 108 kilowatt motor capable of producing 1000 newton meters of torque and has up to 275 kilometers of range and the tipper can be recharged to 80% in about 5 hours. Obviously the benefit here is not only the cleaner air but Yarra City Council is powered by renewable power like power, power, power and well so these trucks will have a zero, absolute zero tailpipe emission. C Electric Regional Director Glenn Walker says that the city of Yarra has made a wise and progressive choice with this electric tipper truck. The drivers thank you because they end their day more refreshed. The ratepayers thank you because the electric tipper is competitive in cost of the whole life compared with a diesel truck. And the environment thanks you. And I bet residents thank them for not interrupting their sleep. What the? 10 gigawatt solar farm with perhaps 20 to 30 gigawatts of storage and a 3000 kilometer power cable from Darwin to Singapore? Oh, you heard right folks. This is amazing. 
billionaire Mike Cannonbrooks, you know that guy who dared Elon Musk to install the Hornsdale battery or it will be free? Well, he confirmed his support of a $25 billion plan to build a 3,000 km undersea cable to export ex it's like solar energy from the Northern Territory to Singapore. 3,000 kilometers. It makes sense, right? Well, let's jump into the details. The Australian Singapore Power Link will see a massive 10 gigawatt solar farm being built near Tennant Creek. As part of this facility, they will also install Tesla's new mega battery. You know, the one with like 20, well, actually, each battery is 1 gigawatt hour of energy in it. But they're going to install 20 to 30 gigawatt hours of storage. And let me just pause for a second. That is a massive battery. For context, one gigawatt hour of power would actually power, oh my gosh, so much power, would actually give you enough energy to power all the homes in San Francisco for six hours. So imagine 20 to 30 San Francisco's. That's city size power. <laughs> or imagine 155 Hornsdale batteries. Yeah, 155 of them. Cannon Brooks in an interview with the Australian Financial Review says that this project is, and well, excuse my French for a second, completely bat insane. Couldn't have said it better myself. As part of this plan, both Darwin and Singapore will benefit from this 10 gigawatt solar farm and with construction starting in 2023 with commercial operation around 2027. Volkswagen has opened a pilot line for small series battery cell production with recycling in Salzgitter, Germany. VW's announcement comes as they like commence preparations for the ID3 and other electric vehicles, which would hit the roads in Europe in 2020 and well, maybe in Australia in 2022. Who knows? The project uh, with like more than 162 million Australian dollars of funding will see 300 experts develop and test production techniques. So the facility um, will be a foundation for VW's own gigafactory capable of producing more than 16, uh, 16 gigawatt hours of energy per year. This exciting development comes on the back of Volkswagen developing and what rather investing in a joint venture with um, uh, Northvolt, a total of like $1.45 billion. That's a lot of money, right? Well, they're going to be uh, constructing starting next year in time for like, like 2024, a 16 gigawatt hour gigawatt factory. Yeah, kind of borrowed from Tesla there, but that's okay. So this battery cell factory is also going to be like in Salzgitter, Germany. And what worries me is that I'm glad that the North Vault develops its own battery tech with everything in mind from where they source the battery from, how they assemble it and keeping green all, all the through all throughout all that. Also uh, about recycling later on. But just 16 hours, 16 gigawatt hours of energy per year isn't much. Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada was reported in April by Elon Musk himself as only producing about 23 gigawatt hours of energy. Okay. Now they're hoping to hit 35 by 2020. And when they realize that, they, they estimate, this is Tesla they estimate, they hope to actually be producing about 500,000 cars per year. Now that's great for Tesla and all, but we're gonna have like a mass car maker, such as VW, hopefully putting to the road by 2025, uh, like a million EVs. So 16 gigawatt hours, it just, the math doesn't work out in my brain. It's too small. Now, perhaps they're going to have other gigafactories around the world like Tesla, but you know, we'll see. Have you ever wondered about whether like a Tesla supercharger at some far off distant location is actually open and ready for you to charge? Or maybe just like you're planning a long drive and want to know if the supercharger that you saw last time you drove past it is now open. Well, wonder no more because supercharge.info 
It's like a community of enthusiasts who have meticulously, meticulously documented supercharged applications like permits from that Tesla puts in, building and maintenance work. If you're interested, uh, a link can be found below. And if you go over there, look, there's some really cool stuff. Like they compare the number of superchargers uh, by region, uh, chart the total numbers of superchargers over time. Oh, and of course you can browse for locations, obviously using the map and create trips to use later on. Go check it out. Okay, let's get into some viewer questions and comments. And while well, coming at you today, we have Taz. Yeah, Taz. I hope I'm saying that right, Taz. Chris, where's my car? He's referring to the Tesla Model 3. And well, I hope you've already got it, Taz. If not, I'm guessing soon. Uh, a friend of mine, he's getting his, um, I think, in October sometime. So it must be the next ship. But, you know, uh, hopefully logistics is getting the act together and getting your car super fast. Scooby Doug writes, finally get to see Chris lose his mind in a Model 3. Thumbs up and happy smiley face. Oh yes, yes I did. And I also got an opportunity to have a ride in a Tesla Model S uh, P90D. And well, this happened. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Oh! This is 100. <laughs> oh my God. Metal Adel writes, any suggestions for some good accessories like good quality mats? Sure, I'll try and do some videos. I went and purchased stuff before I canceled my order, so hashtag awkward. Um, yeah, definitely, we'll do that. Adrian Lightech writes, what is up with the giant aluminium fence around the solar panels? Um, this is my Nissan Leaf uh, video, uh, the first one I did. That would have to block at least a quarter of the sun rays. How about they just elevate the panels on a structure instead? Maybe even a public shelter? Surely that would have been cheaper and the panels would uh, run far better. But hey, it's not my money. Yeah, it's kind of curious too. I, and uh, the angulation is, um, I don't know, I felt it was a bit, a bit of a strange install. And um, well, uh, jet charge and um, uh, Charge Fox, you know, they sort of do these installations. Um, uh, Tim, Tim, Tim from, uh, you know, Jet Charge. Maybe you can help us answer that one. I don't know, but good suggestion. Zoltan writes, you drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> and uh, some days I think to myself, yeah, yeah. You know, you wait three years for the like Tesla Model 3 to come here and you often think to yourself, it's because um, the steering wheel's on the wrong side, you know, maybe. There's very few countries in the world that actually drive on the left side of the road. And yeah, if we had on the, um, you know, if we drive on the right, does that mean that we would actually get things sooner? Who knows? It probably would make manufacturing a lot easier. That's for certain. But with that, thanks very much for your questions, Zoltan, and all, all the other guys. If, if you want to have a, um, your question put on air, put it down below. I don't always put it on air, but you know, I, I try to uh, get back to any queries that you put down there. So please do put them down. Comments always welcome. And hey, if you love the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, do subscribe. It, after all, it's free. And if you can, support me on Patreon. Um, over there, you know, the, the guys get behind the scenes content, early access videos, polls, and well, a growing community where people you know, can contribute and, you know, help each other out. And, you know, your support for all the equipment and stuff and enable me to get out and about doing reviews and uh, interviews and all the other stuff that I do for this channel by being on Patreon helps support that work. So I really do appreciate it. And thank you, my awesome Patreons. And with that, you know what, the, you know how it goes. <laughs> be good, be green.